Well, it's week five, and Optic just put on a clinic beating 100T. Uh, I'm joined right now by Medios with coverage brought to you by Alienware. Talk a little bit about one of the wackiest games. At one point in time, Someday went through your entire base, then came out the bottom, and then killed Crown with uh, somebody. Uh, Hoohee. Hoo yeah, yeah. Uh, and I... I was just like, this is an interesting game. And then it only got crazier from there. Uh, what was the experience for you playing it? Well, it wasn't my best game. It, so we early picked Nocturne yeah. because, like, you know, he's good. He turns off the lights. And they picked just, like, very hard lanes to gank. You know, you've got Urgot, Lissandra, Ezreal, Brom. So it's, like, tanky champions with mobility that also can push their wave. So it was a pretty hard game to play because they also had Olaf, which is, you know, just, like, the like early game jungler he's going to just bully no matter what so we're doing okay but we had sort of like a mistake where he got to kill top lane and i probably i was thinking in game i was like should i hide in the bush wait for this guy but like we had the the river ward so i assumed i could like do krugs and get there in time but he came through try with predator so they caught us off guard and like, they, yeah, they were able to get a top lane advantage from that. They, like, got the Herald. They broke top. They were super fed. Yeah. So it was a pretty hard game to play. Basically, for me, I'm just kind of, like, playing defense because one thing we had going for us was that our champs just, like, outscale. Like, outscaling is one of those terms that, like, it kind of triggers me because, okay. like, in solo queue and even, like, scrims, people are always just like, yeah, you know, we outscale, so we don't have to do anything. And I'm just like, that's not a game plan. Yeah. It's not like... Late, late game team comp. Who cares? It's fine. We'll just lose. Yeah, um, I'm like, no, we have to, like, what are we doing in the next 30 seconds? Like, what is our direction? What are we going for? Like, just scaling is a vague, like, not a real game plan kind of thing. But that's what we did. We just, we just farmed up. We had better scalers. And I, I guess they just, like, made enough mistakes that we were able to win. Yeah. It's interesting to see the cognitive dissonance in your answer where you're like, we outscaled them. I mean, I hate it when people say that, but also we outscaled them. It's like, yeah, there's I mean, no yeah. strategy, but that's the strategy we used and we won, you know. I mean, we didn't really have any other options, right? It's it's more like the terminology, because, you know, you'll have a solo queue game where it's like four kills to 20 kills, and then you're, everyone's trying to FF, and some jackass on your team, you're casted in mid, who's been sitting there while their mid's roaming everywhere, says, no, nah, we outscale those, no one FF, and you're just like... Bro, yeah. we don't like. He believes. He believes. I mean, this happens sometimes, right? Sure, the other team can throw, but dude, get me out when they're mid laners to every yeah. camp. So you don't like? Okay, to be clear, you don't like the term outscaling in situations where it's not applicable. Yeah, I mean, just just like viewing the game in this like super like binary way, it's just like you know, who scales better as the game goes on, like me or him, like oh, my champion is, like, better with six items, so I outscale, but it's, right. like, it's kind of overlooking, like, everything else going on in the game. And anything where it kind of, like, boils down the game to, like, sort of binaries, I, I, I kind of yeah. makes my stomach turn because I'm just... Usually there's more to it than just, like, these these ones and zeros, so. Now, talking about Optic in general, we've, we've discussed this in the past uh, where you're a big fan of, of team environments that are a little bit more casual and people feel like they're friends and it's less cutthroat and ragey is that what optic is for you or is it i mean i i'm just i don't know what the, the behind the scenes experience is like it's a pretty good environment uh we have sort of like our lcs team and our academy team in the same office and we interact a lot so i think it's a fairly stress-free environment but you know we're an lcs team we're here to win and we've been having kind of a rough start so it's not like it's all sunshine like there, there are definitely some arguments. Things can get heated, but I think uh, it's a lot tamer than than like some other teams I've been on. And you know, I think everyone like has a pretty high level of respect for each other. So it's it's like a pretty good environment. You famously last year uh, gave a quote in an interview that was something around, "Yeah, it's awkward having to train your challenger replacement or whatever. Or they're looking to replace you or whatever. It's this odd thing." Uh, it, it, do you feel that same way now with Dardoch hanging out on the challenger side, especially since you said everybody's so close? I think that in this situation, it, I don't really feel that way. Um, I know from the outside, it probably seems like that because both me and Dardoch are kind of like pretty outspoken people. Like we're like confident people and both considered like to be some of the better junglers in the region. So 
like one of us sitting in academy, the other one in LCS. It's, it's always going to seem weird, but uh, I, like it doesn't really feel that way at all. Like we split time in scrim sometimes. Sometimes it's like only me playing. But I, I don't really feel bad if the team's doing better with Dardoch than I want them to use Dardoch because at the end of the day, it's just about like winning, yeah. right? Um, so while I do still think that concern is real for other teams, like I don't think every team that does this like 10 man roster thing is going to be smooth. I think that in this case, it's like still a, a nice environment. Like I, I just think that. As I said before, I think that it can sort of compromise the trust in a team. If you have someone that's like a challenger, or not challenger, academy player, yeah. and they just really want the LCS spot, so maybe they like give the LCS player bad info to kind of like sandbag them or like withhold stuff and just try to only learn from them. And it's definitely something that could happen yeah. given the space, but I don't think it's the case with our team. And the system is, you know, better than I thought it would be. Yeah, sorry. I was saying challenger earlier, and then uh, when it meant academy, and then stole it from uh, you. Stole it from me on accident. But uh, it's good to hear that like things are working well behind the scenes, and that there's not any kind of weirdness with with you and Dardock, especially because like the start of the split started, and Dardock was starting, and he's like, yeah, you know, this is just the way it goes sometimes. I I, I could have seen a world where that was frustrating to you because you maybe you signed on thinking you were going to be a starter, and then he comes in. So it's good to know that's not the case. Now switching back to Hunter T. What is your take on them after playing them? Because it seems like they're in a pretty tough place right now. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't think anyone from the outside is ever going to really like get to understand the inner workings of a team, be able to see what's what's going right, what's going wrong. But um, definitely seems like they're not doing as well as people expected. And maybe part of that's just the fact that they're working with a whole new squad. I think any time you have a team where it's just like you're putting players together that have never played together, it's going to take some time because, you know, even if two people are very good, it doesn't mean they see the same, like the game the same way. If every LCS player was exactly the same as every other LCS player, you could just, you know, yeah. p plug one guy into any spot and it, it would be completely smooth, but it's just not how it is. You know, it's a league is a very complicated game that's always changing, so there's not just one right way to play the game. It's not like we went to law school for league to become an LCS player where you, like, study all these books. Everyone knows the exact same rules in any situation. It's just not like that, right? Maybe, maybe one day it would be, but it's definitely not the case now. We're all just people who play too many video games and ended up becoming pros at it. So I think any new team is just going to take some time to, like, sort of find your identity as a team and just figure out what works. If there was a law school equivalent of League of Legends LCS, would you teach there or write a book for it? Maybe. I think I've got a lot of experience. I could probably give some pointers. Yeah. The curriculum. Jungling by Medios. Is there anything that you want to say to any of the Optic fans out there? Uh, well, thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> I know it's been a rough start. But I feel like this win was huge for us as far as like morale goes and everything. And we're definitely getting better. So thanks for sticking with us. And uh, hopefully we can make you proud. Thank you so much for the interview, Medios. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here on my YouTube channel. Hey, don't click away. I know it's the end of the video. Don't click away. I, I know that you're, just, you're like hitting. You're, there's another clip somewhere that you're going to click. Don't. All right, because I got to tell you about my sponsor, Alienware. They sponsor everything I'm doing this year. You can check out the link in the description. It's super helpful. By the way, U.GG, they're generously supplying stats for a bunch of these videos, so uh, be sure to check them out as well. There's a link down there as well. Uh, and also, you know, while we're just full sellout in this outro, um, you can go check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Travis Gafford. If you give me a follow there, it's very helpful, and you can even Twitch Prime. And once you've completed all three of those uh, activities, you'll be allowed to enter heaven.